This is not a topic that I have spent in the course of my life an enormous amount of time studying. And in fact, EVs are relatively new in the car experience for most people. Mm -hmm. I want to talk and unpack some of these bigger issues around Elon, around Tesla. But I guess I want to start with a broad overview and then we'll drill down into some of the specifics. This is a loaded question, but I feel like it's a good place to start. How is Tesla doing? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty broad question. Uh, it, I like to address Tesla basically on um, its impact on the North American market is, is the main thing. It's For the longest time, it has been the main automaker uh, for electric vehicle in North America, having over 50% market share, which is pretty wild. And um, we expected for a long time that this would erode over time with competitions. And uh, sure enough, that's what happened in the last few years. But over the last few months, it's been completely different, obviously. I mean, you've opened the news and Tesla has become politicized and uh, it's, uh, the, the brand impact has been very significant. But if you ask exactly how it's doing, we won't know for sure until like um, in the next few weeks. Actually, next week, we'll have a pretty good idea. We're going to have the Q1 delivery numbers for Tesla, uh, which is going to be the first number to come after the election and the you know the the salute at the um, at the inauguration and all that unfold after that that had a major impact on Tesla's brand and then after that it's going to be the earnings in the late April that are going to give us a pretty good idea but the problem with that is like there's something else that's happening with Tesla right now and uh, it's the uh, changeover of the Model Y and the Model Y is Tesla's biggest vehicle program by far it is the best selling not just electric vehicle in the world, it's the best-selling car in the world, which is an incredible accomplishment by Tesla. And they did a um, design changeover over the last few months. And because of that, because of being the biggest model, when you change over the production line, you're going to affect uh, the, the total output. Uh, so it, the deliveries are going to be way down over last quarter by probably over 100,000 units, which is giant for Tesla. So a lot of people are going to attribute the um, degradation in sales to the brand erosion, but a lot of a lot of that is a supply issue for Tesla also. So it's going to be hard to judge exactly how bad Tesla is doing. But over the in 2024, Tesla in its first year where volume uh, delivery volume were down, while Tesla is seen as a growth company. You know, Elon was talking about 20 million units in uh, 2030, and now Tesla went down for the first time from 1.7 million uh, units, and most likely going to be down this year if the trend continues. I want to talk about what's happening in North America, but it does seem to me that if we're going to have a conversation about Tesla, and again, I'm I'm not an expert, certainly you are, which is why you're here, but in, in preparing for this interview, what really kind of struck me was that to better understand, and there's myriad factors, of course, but it does seem like a good place to start is what is happening in China. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, China is having a revolution in EVs, and that it comes from both technological development on their own side, which comes, from, as I understand it, from state subsidies, uh, a huge investment in manufacturing, and they're creating manufacturing hubs, they're simplifying supply chains, mm -hmm. and to an extent, Tesla is doing some of this as well. For folks who may not know, and I'm sure you can expand on this in just a moment, for example, if Volkswagen or some other brand wants to do business in China, they have to partner with some sort of known entity in China, which Tesla apparently does not have to do. But let's start a bit of the conversation there. What is happening in the broader EV market in China first? And second, how does Tesla fit into that? Well, the two subjects are, are linked very closely, the two questions that you just um, asked, because, you know, EVs existed in China before Tesla was in the market. There's, there's no doubt about that. But it was fairly limited. It was seen as a cheaper EVs, um, literally a more affordable, but also cheaper quality. And um, the market was not significant at all, even though the car market in China, by that time that Tesla entered the market in the 2010s, uh, it, it was already a big car market, but just not a big EV market. And yeah, you're right. So for, for the longest time, automakers, foreign automakers getting into the Chinese market uh, needed to partner with a local Chinese company, which are a uh, local Chinese automaker, which are most of them are partly or fully state owned. And um, Tesla managed to get around that. 
Tesla was already selling cars imported from the U.S. into China, very low volume, uh, and planned to build manufacturing there, but they didn't want to partner with anyone. And Elon somehow, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, managed to strike a deal with China. In Shanghai, there's a, a free trade zone that was set up, where, as the name implies, it's, it's free trade. And Tesla was able to get a deal there to build a giant factory, now called uh, Gigafactory Shanghai. And this was a big deal for Tesla because, first of all, they managed to set it up very quickly. Within nine months from breaking ground, they were producing cars there, which is mind-blowing. And then within a, a few years, they were producing over a million vehicles, or I think the capacity to produce over a million vehicles there, which also propels Tesla to a new level of manufacturing. And at first, it was supposed to be, at least based on what Elon said, it was to be Chinese manufactured vehicles for the Chinese market. Uh, but that's not what happened. Quickly, they started exporting those vehicles to other market in Europe, in uh, the Australia, in other Asian countries, and even in Canada for a while before uh, we implemented a bunch of tariffs uh, to prevent that from happening to protect US EV manufacturing. But yeah, what happened from there, it, it was a giant boom for EVs in China. Subsidies were involved, so um, the government both subsidized the manufacturing electric vehicles by supporting manufacturers, but also the buying aspects, so with subsidies to consumers. And uh, that helped Tesla a lot in the market because they could apply for that because they were, even though they were foreign owned, they were still a Chinese automaker uh, manufacturer. And uh, But what happens a lot <laughs> with Chinese uh, manufacturing is that, first of all, the Chinese have an expertise in manufacturing that is unparalleled in the world. Uh, it's, not, it's not just what people used to say, that it's like, oh, yeah, they're just good because of cheap labor, because uh, they, um, they have a lot of it. They have an expertise in manufacturing now that is just incredible. They have more manufacturing engineers than anyone in the world. Like, the number of manufacturing engineers that you could that you could find in the U.S. like would fit in a small auditorium, maybe. Well, it would fit it wouldn't fit in like a giant stadium <laughs> in China. Like it's completely different. And um, you know, some people come to work at Tesla, and then they move on to other companies. They get to learn about the technology, and like so I'm not I'm not trying to imply some kind of like spying, corporate spying, or anything like that here. But there is a transfer of technology that does happen. And also, Tesla has this policy of sort of open source patent, which is kind of uh, getting in the nitty gritty here, but uh, it, it's not fully open source, but they kind of say that if you're not suing us for patent infringement, we won't sue you for patent infringement. So you can kind of use Tesla's patents uh, if, you're, if you don't plan on suing them, if Tesla ends up using your patents, something like that. So there is even a, a Chinese company called Xpeng that openly started because of that. They saw that, they were like, all right, well, fair game then, and the, uh, the use some of the Tesla technology. And from there, the Chinese EVs have improved immensely. And now, according to a lot of experts, myself included, I think some of them have surpassed Tesla in, in a significant way. And you also have a lot of battery manufacturing in China, and the batteries is obviously a big part of the electric vehicles. And um, Tesla has uh, two of its biggest uh, battery supplier now are uh, CATL, the world's biggest battery supplier, and BYD, which, which is also a competitor to Tesla. They also produce electric vehicles, but they also produce a lot of batteries, and Tesla is putting those inside its vehicle uh, in China and uh, in uh, those uh, produced in uh, Germany also. So yeah, that changed the whole market. Now EVs are ultra popular in China, including Tesla's, but the competition now is putting a lot of pressure on Tesla at the moment.